Welcome to Ishak Pasha Palace. We are in the eastern part of Turkey, neighboring Iran. This is one of the few Ottoman palaces that was built in the 18th century. The construction started in 1685 and completed in 1784, so it took 100 years to complete this palace. And the style in this courtyard, we can see the Soljuk, the Ottoman, Persian, and also Armenian. I'm not sure exactly which uh, is which, but there's a mixture of cultures that collide here. As soon as we enter to the palace, we see a fountain, an Ottoman fountain. And one tub, supposedly there was water and the other was a milk. Let's go see the dungeons and the dungeon that's where the prisoners were kept and in this particular dungeon uh, one of napoleon's secret agents was arrested and jailed <laughs> and dungeons were used for not only for jailing purposes but also for slave trading so they would bring him here and then ship it to Middle East, I would say. In the mid-19th century, the palace was significantly damaged due to the earthquake. And after about 20 years, they managed to restore it. However, the Turkish Russo war led to more destruction of the palace. Therefore, it was acquired by the Russians until World War I, when they used it as their defensive position. After World War I, the palace was given to the Ottomans and it was therefore used as a military fort until about 1930s. This is the portal, soldier style portal into the courtyard that served for the state affairs. And then we have here the tomb. Supposedly it was for Ishak Palace the second. Wow, this one is really impressive entrance. This is definitely not Muslim art uh, design because you cannot depict animals in it looks like uh, more Persian, I would say. During the restorations from 2004 to 2011, these glass and wooden beams were added and people say they changed the historic look of it, which is unfortunate because I think it's important to restore it as it was. You see the wooden beams there as well. We've entered the kitchen and the reason why these pillars are black is because of oil and smoke that would stick to it. There was the ventilation system up there. Quite a large kitchen. But you need one for such a big palace, don't you? Here's the bath. This is the dressing room. And this is the bathtub and the boiler would be behind it. I found the toilet which looks like a, a modern toilet or a toilet that we still have today with a nice window that leads to this view. This is the ceremonial hall where various types of entertainment would be performed and Pasha was writing his poems here, supposedly. But I love this style. Haram rooms. Ottoman hooligans. 
but but that's that's a joke obviously however in Dubrovnik you can find such a marks as these and actually they were done about no more than 500 years ago and it was bonded, done by the vandals that were against the church they would ca carve out certain things in latin language and yeah that was a their sign of demonstration against church We just entered a mosque inside this palace. A really large mosque, really impressive. This limestone gives it a bright color to the rooms and the palace itself. Next to every mosque, there's a minaret. Let's go find it. Layout. Not much going on here. Here's the dome of the mosque and on top, next to it actually, you can see the minaret that has the two colored interchanging layers, which fits the color of the whole palace. This desert looking palace is really comforting compared to like the darker ones when they use the bricks or the rocks that have a dark brownish color this one is more appealing to the eye it feels like you're at home A final fun fact about this palace is that after it became a part of the, the Turkish Republic in mid 20th century, the palace was slowly dismantled because the local people would come here, take the stones and the bricks in order to build their own houses. That was a unique landmark we just visited. Let's go check out Noah's Ark better view from this point. 